Hey everybody, this is a video tutorial for how to build the quintuple icosahedron. So the first thing you need is this shape, which I call the core. And I've done a video tutorial for this, so I'll post a link. And you'll notice that the uh, pentagons that go on the corners are aligned differently. And you can see triangles across the surface of this, whereas you could not see that in the how-to video. But this is the way you want it. And this actually, uh, I count as the first layer of the quintuple icosahedron. So, because you can see it has the shape of an icosahedron frame. So then you also need um, lots of stacked pentagon rings. Those are rings of five magnets. And I have, uh, I think, uh, 144 um, arranged up here in stacks. Then you also need stacked larger rings, uh, 60 of each size and four different sizes. Uh, these are rings of 12 magnets. You need 60 of those. These are rings of 20 magnets. Again, 60 of those. Rings of 28 magnets, 60 of those. And rings of 36 magnets. And you need 60 of those. So, to build this thing, I'm going to go ahead and move these off to the side for now and only worry about the rings of 12 magnets for the moment. You take your core and you take 24 of these stacked rings of 5 and you'll go ahead and cut them up into 12 stacks of 2, just like that. And you want to go ahead and add each piece on the pentagonal corner of the core, just like that. You do that to all 12 corners. Okay, and now you want to take these rings of 12 magnets and flatten them out and cut them up into long straight pieces. Okay, and you can see that I've also uh, laid out 12 pentagons. Now, the way that you build these layers is not super important at the small sizes like this, but it gets very important as you get to the larger sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the um, correct order to build the, uh, to put on the straight pieces, because uh, it helps to avoid deformation if you put them on in a specific order. So, the first thing you want to do is take three of these and make them into a triangle and add that down on top of those three corners. Just like that. Then what you want to do is add straight pieces on until you've totally completed uh, these three uh, vertices of the icosahedron. Okay, and now that you've finished these three corners, you want to go ahead and add the first three of these on top of those corners, just like you do when you're building an icosahedron frame. And finish those off. And then you can go ahead and flip this over on top of that completed uh, bottom face. And then you want to go ahead and take more of these until you've finished uh, these three corners here. And again, now that you have three completed corners, you go ahead and put three pentagons on the one you've just completed. And the important thing to note here is just that you are adding pentagons on as you complete corners, and you're trying to complete corners in a kind of symmetrical fashion, because that will keep the whole thing from deforming, especially once it gets very large. So then you want to add more until you've completed uh, these next three corners.
And again, add more pentagon rings, three more. And finally, you can finish it off the same way that you started it by making a triangle and then adding that down on top. And again, the order in which you add on these edge pieces really makes just about zero difference when you're working with these inner layers. But when you get out to layers like four and five, it becomes very important to do it in the right order. Or else stuff will start to bend out of shape. Okay, and that is how you add on the next layer. And then you want to go ahead and take 24 more pentagons and kind of repeat the same process over again. Okay, and you'll notice something important that I did here, and that is that I've saved three of these corner supports to put on until after I flip it over, because as this gets heavier, you don't want to put these three on until you flip it over, because if it was just resting on these, those would crumple and it would not be good. So, then you take your stacked rings of 20 magnets, and you do the exact same thing that you just did with layer two, and now you make layer three. And now that you've flipped it, you can add these on. Okay, and that's layer three. Now, you again, exact same thing to make layer four. You add supports, and this time you're doing it with rings of 28 magnets. Okay, and that's the fourth layer. And if you've made it this far, you're probably starting to see how important it is to follow the uh, routine that I showed you for layer two. But again, exact same thing for layer five. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but these are rings of 36 magnets.
Okay, there you go. That is the quintuple icosahedron. Really big shape. Although for the size, it's pretty sturdy. And I'm not going to smash it just yet because uh, I have more magnets now than I did last time I built this. So I have these rings of, ah, Forty-four magnets, and I'm gonna see if I can't go for six layers. So we'll see how this works out. And there you go, it is possible. That is a sextuple icosahedron. This thing is like the size of a basketball. I'm gonna get some pictures of it before I smash it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Snapped a couple pictures and now I'm ready to smash it. Alright, here it goes.